top doctors of India discuss the COVID situation and the road ahead. Let's listen in. That first, <clears throat> you see a doctor, get their opinion. It is very, very important for you to get the opinion from a well-trained doctor who knows how to manage COVID. And it is very important that they may ask you to undergo some blood tests. If it is required, you please do it. Don't panic. COVID is very common now, and it is a problem which can be solved, provided you get the medical help at a very early stage and follow all the instruction given by the doctors. Now, there is a possibility. You may be asymptomatic. Then the doctors will tell you that stay at home. Yes, please stay at home. Isolate yourself. That's very, very important. Wear a mask and check your oxygen saturation every six hours with your own pulse oximeter. I expect every citizen of this country now to, at least every household, to have at least one or two pulse oximeters, which are freely available, and they're not very expensive. And believe me, they are very reliable. And check your oxygen saturation at least once in six hours. And after you check it, again, walk for six minutes, and then again, you check your oxygen saturation. If your oxygen saturation is staying above 94%, no problems. But if it is falling after the exercise, then you need to call your doctor. It's very, very important that you get the right treatment at the right time. That is very, very important. So before I end my talk, I just want to uh, let you know that it doesn't matter whether you're 100% certain that the fever or a body ache, what you have is not due to COVID, never rest assured. Because today, as far as doctors like me are concerned, any patient complaining of anything in their body is COVID unless proven otherwise. And if you reach the hospital or, or the approach the doctor, consult the doctor on time, appropriate treatment at the right time can save your life. And now I would like to request my colleague uh, Naresh to uh, take it further. Thank you very much. Good luck and God bless. Good afternoon. This is Dr. Naresh Trehan. So where Dr. Devi Shetty left off is the point that somebody gets the symptoms, gets tested, or gets tested because somebody else in the family has, has been diagnosed with RT-PCR that they have COVID or the whole, because what today it can be families, whole families who have got infected in the household. So if that is the case and you have whoever tests positive, going forward, like Dr. Devi said, the first thing to do is to contact a doctor. There are multiple ways of doing that. You may have your own doctor. You may have a, a vicinity doctor. Or, as you may have seen, all of our hospitals, I, I, like I represent Vedanta, Dr. Shetty does Narayana, that we have apps which are, says, Vedanta COVID app, or all the hospitals have. And all the cities have also actually designed the app, and the government also has it as an app. So you can get advice on the closest doctor. Let them understand your symptoms and your age and your comorbidities and the severity of your symptoms and then advise you what to do. So there are three possible scenarios that can emerge from here. One is the fact that you are not sick so much that we don't expect you to recover at home, that the treatment can be started at home right away and monitoring at home can be done and you have given guidelines of what medicines to take and the medicines will vary according to the need of the individual. That's why you need a doctor to understand your symptoms and your other comorbidities and other things and then prescribe. So that is what we call home care or home quarantine. In case you do not have enough space in the house to isolate yourself, then we have quarantine centers where one can be, be uh, admitted and care taken like isolation there and also your oxygen and all that can be measured there. 
So these are places where you can not only be if you don't have uh, isolation at home, but if you are mid-level symptoms, you can go and all of our hospitals have established these facilities, quarantine facilities in hotels or guest houses next to our hospital where you will be monitored real time on a daily basis. If by perchance things deteriorate, we can, we can always bring you into our hospital. That way the channel is clear that you do not seek a hospital admission if it is not necessary or out of panic. Let the doctor guide you where you belong according to all the questionnaires that you answered. So the, then if those are people who have drop in oxygen, the CT scan is showing high score, or the doc, we, we all feel that look, and all the doctors have the protocols, that according to the protocol, we feel that you have to be admitted, only then you should be brought into the hospital. So I would like to at this point say, there are certain things in behavior pattern which we must do. So you've already been warned about wearing a mask and isolating yourself if you develop symptoms. Then if you are given medicines, you access them from your closest chemist or there are facilities today for home delivery, where in the package, we can deliver you the appropriate medicines. And if you don't have a pulse oximeter, that can be given to you and all the directions of how to manage yourself, how much to exercise, how much, how much nutrition you need. All this advice will help you to recover rapidly at home or in the, in the quarantine center. So very few percent will require hospitalization. And as you realize, there is a responsibility that hospital beds are always not available and there is a constraint. So we must utilize those hospital beds judiciously and with responsibility. And that responsibility rests on all of us, the citizens, the doctors, the hospital providers, and then of course, intensive care unit for those very few people who may need to go to. But today you must be feel comfortable with the fact that you will have a, a very high chance that you'll get cured. So don't panic and don't have so much anxiety that you get confused on the pathway that you have to follow. That is one part. The other part is that we are fortunately in India where our pharmaceutical industry has come a long way in helping with this fight. They have ramped up their facilities. They have made connections from overseas uh, companies to bring the medicines to India, manufacture them in India. So you take medicines like Faviflu, you take Remdesivir, Rem sorry. You take some of the other uh, vitamins and all that that you need, we prescribe. All those have been manufactured in India in enough quantity. Now you may have heard there was a shortage of Remdesivir available. So I want to address the fact, when do you need remdesivir? We have now made a protocol that remdesivir is to be given not to everybody who will test positive. And that misconception I would like to take out of people's mind. Only the doctor will look at a set of test uh, results and a set of symptoms which show that a person is experiencing a viral load which is giving them high fever, they are vulnerable population, like uh, people who have liver disease, who have kidney disease, people who are on, on chemotherapy but from cancer, the highly diabetics, obese people, people who have BMI greater than 35 are the ones who are most, most vulnerable and people who are showing signs of cough, fever, which is not responsive to other medicines. So in the first few days of the illness, if the doctor feels appropriate, only then remdesivir is to be given and not to given, be given to everybody. It is not a Ramban and it is only effective in decreasing the viral load in the people who need it. Having said that, then we know that there will be other treatments like cortisone if you, are, if you enter the phase of cytokine response. This is the response of the body to fight the virus and the protein and there are prescribed medicines for that, and that they, they are also based on certain tests which we will be prescribed by the doctor. So those blood tests will tell us if there is inflammation in the body, and the chest, uh, HRCT, that is the chest uh, CT, will also tell us if there is 
enough inflammation that it justifies the use of steroids and other drugs. So majority, I mean the vast majority will be treated and will recover rapidly over a period of time. So that's, that's the way to go. So if all this is being done and your oxygen level is falling and not responding to oxygen and the doctor feels that it's time to come into the hospital, they'll advise you to come into the hospital. So that's the other part I would like to say that in any country, any part of the world, there is X amount of oxygen available for, as a product, product, as production. Today, we have enough oxygen if we try to use it judiciously. We don't want to waste uh, oxygen. So the protocols for oxygen use and the response to what level we want the oxygenation in a patient to be, and the fact that I would like to inform the public also that if you don't need it, don't use it just for a security blanket. If you are not using it and you are walking around or eating or something, switch off the oxygen. We are giving the same advisory to doctors and to hospitals also, that judicious use of oxygen most definitely should be done, and any patient who needs it should get it. So wastage will only lead to depriving some people of this oxygen, which you should be as individuals, as citizens, have a collective responsibility that we do not want to get into that stage where we feel responsible for being selfish and wasting something and depriving somebody else. So having given you that, there is good hope, but masking, of course, is your first duty. Wear it, distance yourself, and hand hygiene is every citizen's responsibility and the first line of defense and the most effective way of, of preventing the virus from spreading. So the bed situation in India, a lot of expansion of capacity has been done in the last year. We have also more capacities to be added, but what, what I would like to communicate is and appeal to people is, don't rush to the hospital just because you have tested positive. You will be taken care of or will be given beds if everybody participates responsibly in this and the doctor prescribes that, yes, it's time to bring you into the hospital. Same advice we are giving to all our doctors also to take care of patients properly when they need it, only then advice that they should come into the hospital. There is no such thing as preventive hospitalization. We should not do that. There is always a limited capacity, but we will cope. And you will appreciate that for the over last 15 months, the medical community, the healthline workers, the frontline workers, we are all standing, fighting together, this whole uh, unfortunate event that has happened. And we need your help in reducing the burden and we can do a much better job for you. So with that, thank you for, for listening to my communication and I'll hand it over to Dr. Guleria who will add to whatever uh, things that needs to be done in addition and give an overview of what the population, potential patients and doctors and hospitals need to do. Thank you for your attention and over to Dr. Guleria, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Trayan. And, uh... Uh, I'll be addressing a few things which I think are important for the public to understand as far as uh, the current situation in the pandemic is concerned, and I'll take it from where Dr. Trayan left off. Uh, the first, of course, most important thing to understand is that in, in, in COVID-19, and we have now enough data, that more than 85% of people will recover without any really specific treatment in the form of remdesivir, steroids, or any other uh, drugs that we are are talking about. Most of them will have features which will be like a common cold, body aches, fever, sore throat, some may have gastritis, and over a period of five to seven days, they will recover with just symptomatic treatment, which means just taking paracetamol, keeping yourself hydrated, doing your regular exercise, taking your vitamins, and just uh, being positive about your health. It's only 15% of people who may go on to what we call moderate disease, where your oxygen saturation may fall or you may have high-grade fever and there may be mar markers to suggest ongoing inflammation. Now, it's only in that percentage of people who have other features to suggest that the disease has progressed 
that we need to give treatment in the form of remdesivir, steroids, anticoagulants, and sometimes we also give convalescent plasma. So it's important for everyone to understand that most of us who are either in home isolation or even at, in the hospital because of panic, don't really need any specific treatment. Like you treat a simple cold, you can get away with treating COVID in majority of people with just taking paracetamol, keeping yourself well hydrated. It's only a small percentage which will require drugs like remdesivir. And there is no data which suggests that remdesivir taken in mild disease will save lives or will have any benefit. The data for remdesivir does not show that it actually decreases mortality. It only has been shown to decrease hospital stay. And the large study done by WHO, the recovery trial, was a negative study. It did not show any role of remdesivir. Therefore, don't consider this to be a magic bullet. It is something that we need to keep in mind. So that is the first message that I would like to give that majority of people don't need to panic. They can home isolate themselves. And as uh, Dr. Devi Shetty said, monitor yourself at home, keep yourself well hydrated, monitor your saturation, and consult your doctor if you have any worry. But you will become all right staying at home and you, need, you, may not, you will not need to come to the hospital. Very few will actually need to come to the hospital. By rushing to the hospital, you are creating more chaos and you're not actually benefiting yourself and you're actually denying a bed to a fellow citizen who may need it and may not be able to get it because of unnecessary hospitalization for people who don't need to be in hospital. The second thing that I would like to talk of is regarding oxygen. Now, there is a lot of uh, issue as far as oxygen is concerned. I do agree, and this is very important for those who have oxygen or need oxygen. Oxygen is a treatment. It's like a drug. And therefore, it's very, very important for us to understand that one of the treatment for COVID-19 is to give oxygen if you need it. And in, more, in many lung diseases, when you have pneumonia, when you have chronic lung disease, when your saturation falls, oxygen is a treatment that is given sometimes for a short duration, but sometimes people are on long-term oxygen therapy if their lungs are bad uh, because of a chronic lung disease. Now, an important issue here is that taking oxygen intermittently your saturation is all right, but you say, okay, let me take oxygen for half an hour after my meals, or if I take oxygen for, for a few hours in the day, I, my saturation goes up and I'm feeling better, and I should therefore continue oxygen is actually a waste of oxygen. There is no data to show that this will be of any help to you, and therefore this is something that you should not do. Many patients have started keeping oxygen cylinders at home and have started taking it for half an hour, two hours. That itself is more harmful and is actually again denying oxygen to people who actually need, need it. The third important thing to remember as far as oxygen is concerned is oxygen is carried in our blood. And we look at what is the oxy oxygen which is carried in the blood by looking at the oxygen saturation. But if your saturation is 92, 93, or your saturation is 98, 99, the actual oxygen in the blood is not very different because the oxygen dissociation curve is what we call a sigmoid curve. And after you reach a saturation of 90, it is actually flat. So you don't really get too much of oxygen in your blood, even if you go from 92 to 98. Therefore, in those individuals who are having an oxygen saturation of 93, 94, there is no need to really take high oxygen or high flow oxygen just to maintain your saturation at 98, 99. It is not going to be of any benefit. Therefore, you should have a judicious use of oxygen there is no need to take oxygen if your saturation is over 95. If it is less than nine and over 94, if it's less than 94, you need close monitoring, but you still may not need oxygen because your oxygen in the blood is still sufficient in those patients who are healthy. In some patients who have chronic disease or who have other problems like chronic heart disease, you may want to keep the oxygen saturation on a slightly higher side, but even if your oxygen is around 90, 92, don't panic, consult your doctor. You may need to be very closely monitored, but it is not that you should start oxygen to maintain your saturation over 97, 98. It is actually going to be of not much benefit. And I think as a country collectively, if we work together and say that we will use remdesivir judiciously, we will use oxygen judiciously, there will be no shortage of uh, oxygen, whether we talk of Maharashtra, Delhi, Chhattisgarh, or any other state, because in terms of the number of patients who need oxygen and the supply of oxygen, that is well balanced. But if you suddenly start hoarding oxygen, if you start using it when you don't need it, then obviously you will have a deficiency which is self-created rather than uh, actually existing. So my appeal to everyone is that please 
don't take oxygen when it is not required taking oxygen just for the fun of it is denying oxygen to someone who may actually need it and whose life could be saved and secondly even if your oxygen saturation is 93 94 don't rush to take oxygen to bring it up to 98 99 your oxygen carrying capacity in the blood will remain the same it is not going to change so much as far as the oxygen dissociation curve is concerned the third thing that i wanted to mention was regarding vaccination there is a lot of fear that now what is the point in getting vaccination because i know a person who got vaccinated and i even after two weeks of vaccination he got covid 19 the vaccine prevents you from getting disease it may not prevent you from getting infection and we must understand the difference between the two the vaccine will prevent you from getting disease in the form of severe illness hospitalization going into the icu or even dying from covid 19 we know that it has a good protection in majority of people as far as the vaccine is concerned but in 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 some you may still get when you are exposed to a patient with covid 19 the vaccine may the virus may still come in your nose and throat it may multiply there for some time but the antibodies which have been produced because of the vaccine that you've taken will not allow the virus to further replicate and it will not allow the disease to become more severe and therefore you will be saved but during that time your rt pcr test can be positive and you may be infectious to others therefore it's very important for all of us to understand that even after getting the vaccine we may have a positive covid report and we will also be infectious so wearing a mask even after you have become covid uh, have after you got your vaccine is very very important to protect your near and dear ones your family members your colleagues because they may not have been vaccinated or their vaccine uh, may not have been completed in terms of both the shots and they may be susceptible to the infection therefore please remember that masking is still important even after you've taken your vaccine and the vaccine will prevent you from severe disease but you may still get the infection and you know should not get dejected that i took the vaccine and now i have still got covid 19 because currently we know that the vaccine does not prevent from infection hopefully as we go along and more research comes in we will have better vaccines which may also prevent us from getting the infection and that would be very good because that will really bring down the number of cases and uh, break the chain of transmission i would like to say at the end that the most important thing for all of us is to have covid appropriate behavior vaccine is just one weapon that we have but vaccine is not something which will bring down the pandemic the number of cases that we are having right now have to be brought down by breaking the chain of transmission this is a virus which spreads from one human to another it doesn't spread by water it doesn't spread by mosquitoes so if we are able to prevent virus spreading from ourselves if we are positive to another person we will break the chain of transmission and the virus will not spread in our community therefore wear your mask properly make sure it covers your nose and mouth it is tightly sealed from the side so that you are also protected and you are also adding to protecting others also so masking up is very very important along with that maintain uh, the your distance do gas ki duri along with that wash your hands regularly if you are in an indoor environment make sure that there is good cross ventilation because we are now knowing that the virus can stay as an aerosol in the air for a longer period in time and therefore having good cross ventilation and making sure that all the air in the room is well circulated is also very very important but for all of us the most important thing is that we should mask up avoid forming crowds avoid crowds because crowds can be super spreading events and we can have a huge surge in the number of cases in your locality in your area if you are not taking care uh, care about crowds or crowds developing you may feel that all your friends and this happens to residents it happens to uh, your friends uh, your colleagues that all my friends are all right i know them so they are not infected so we can all sit together and have a cup of tea or have a meal together you may have many who may be asymptomatic and if one of them has the infection we are now seeing a strain which is very infectious it will infect majority almost all of them who are sitting together and having your cup of tea or or having a meal together so please don't have crowds eat your uh, meals separately have your tea separately communicate through your telephones your your other uh, apps but don't really sit together because this is not the time to do so so i would just appeal to everyone and this appeal is actually from all of us from the doctor community that we have to bring our cases down if we really need to really work aggressively in decreasing the load in the hospital saving lives 
and decreasing the stress that healthcare workers are currently going through because of the increasing pressure that they're seeing in the hospital. For all of, for that, every citizen should come forward and follow COVID appropriate behavior. Please wear your mask, maintain physical distancing. Please don't form crowds, avoid others from forming crowds, stay indoors if you don't have to go out, uh, if it's not essential. If we do that for the next few weeks, our cases will come down, the hospital strain will come down, and we will come out of this pandemic once again, as we have done uh, last year. So my appeal to all of you is, please mask up. If we all get together, we can come through this very, very successfully and in a very, at, at a very, in a very short time. So, the, and, and finally, I'd like to thank my colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Naresh Turehan and Dr. Devi Shetty for being part of this uh, uh, conference that we had. And again, I'd like to appeal to everyone to wear their mask and maintain physical distancing. Thank you very much. Very important points being made by Dr. Devi Shetty, by Dr. Naresh Trehan and Dr. Randeep Guleria. Be in a room which has good ventilation, a point that was just being made. Do not, do not think that Remdesivir is a magic bullet. Very significant points that were also being made by Dr. Naresh Trehan. We'll talk about that in greater detail during the course of the... Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.